In this video, we are going to take a deeper look into forms. The first order of business is to take care of checking smoothness of a form. The way smoothness is defined, it is dependent on you checking the smoothness of the coefficient functions with respect to a frame field on every possible parameterization of the manifold M. This is not a possible task in a finite amount of time. So what we are going to now do is we are going to see that it suffices to check on a collection of um, parameterizations whose images cover the manifold M. To do this, we have to introduce the notion of a pullback under a differentiable map. Let's get to business. Definition. Let f from m to n be a smooth map. Of course, m and m are smooth manifolds. Are smooth manifolds. Okay, let omega be a differential form, differential form on, on n. We define, we define the pullback, pullback f star omega as follows, as follows. If so, let me just uh, fix some things. Uh, so let omega be a differential k form. So we define f star omega as follows. So f star omega at a point A acting on the vectors v1 to vk. Here v1 to vk are all elements of TAM. To to define the pullback, to define the action of the pullback on these vectors v1 to vk, we look at the action of omega at the point f of a. Remember, omega lives on the manifold n. We are pulling it back to m. And it acts on the vectors, the derivative map of f at a v1, comma dot dot dot, the derivative map of f at a vk. Okay. So, the pullback is defined by first transforming vectors v1 to vk in the domain to the vectors in the codomain via the derivative map. Now, I had mentioned that we will consider only smooth forms in the future. So, if omega is actually a smooth form, then does it follow that f star omega is a smooth form? First, let's, let me just give you some basic exercises before we get to this. The answering this question lies at the heart of what we want to achieve in this particular video. That is to make the definition of smoothness of a form defined on a manifold a workable definition. Okay, so let's first, uh, I mean, state some exercises for you to do. First of all, prove that, prove that f star omega is a k form, is a k form. What I mean by that is it just assigns to each point of the manifold M a alternating k tensor defined on the tangent space to that manifold at that point. I am not talking about smoothness in this particular exercise. Then another exercise for you, what is f star of a function g if g from n to r is a zero form? Okay, so if you start with just a function, functions are zero forms, what happens when you take the pullback? third exercise for you, show the following properties of the pullback. Show the following properties, properties of the pullback.
the first property is sort of linearity f star of omega 1 plus omega 2 is f star omega 1 plus f star omega 2. The second property describes the behavior of the pullbacks with respect to wedge products and the behavior is extraordinarily nice just says that f star of omega wedge eta is f star of omega wedge f star of eta and three when you compose two maps f composed with g star of omega is g star f star omega I am not describing what f and g are here they are just smooth maps from manifolds m n and p for instance this just the third property just says that uh, uh, the composition there will be a chain rule when you compose smooth maps except there will be a reversal of directions if you compose f and g you will end up with g star f star essentially saying that we have a contravariant functor okay now this addresses these exercises will uh, address some basic properties of the pullback but we are still no closer to proving that pullback will be a smooth form and it is not yet clear how pullbacks is going to address the original question of how to check whether a form on a manifold is smooth so let's first try to understand how this pullback behaves in euclidean space after all the definition of a form on a manifold was obtained by just passing to an open set in rn via parametrization so it stands to reason that if you understand everything in the euclidean space uh, our understanding in the manifold case will be analogous so first let's take the example let's take the example of some simple forms defined on an open set so let u subset of rn be open then then we sort of have a basis we have a basis of one forms one forms dx1 to dxn what are these forms well if v is an element of rn then v is also an element of ta of m or rather tau in this case tau irrespective irrespective of the choice of a of the choice of a because we are in euclidean space the tangent space at all points is just euclidean space itself ta of u is rn itself so this v is going to be an element of ta of u the action of dxi at the point a on v will give you vi that v is v1 to vn so this basis form dxi acting on a vector just gives the coordinate vi irrespective of the point in question it doesn't matter if you change a also the action is going to be the same so these forms dxi are defined in the obvious way now there is a ambiguity in notation here we have already encountered dxis before when we studied just forms on the vector space rn these were forms on uh, these were one forms dxis were one forms on rn in that scenario dxi itself is just an element of the dual space of rn whereas the dxis here the dx1 to dxn are uh, uh, for different species each one of these objects takes as input a point a and this dxi at the point a would give you a alternating one form which is just a linear functional so what happens is dxi of a is just dxi so this is a bit of uh, what do you say um, jugglery with uh, linguistics but just make sure you understand that there is a difference between dx1 to dxn when treated as uh, dual 
the elements in the dual space of Rn and here where they are they are treated as one forms on the open set U. From the context you should infer what species of Dxi is being studied in that current situation. Okay. Now we have some examples of one forms that these one these one forms are smooth. These one forms one forms dxi are smooth. Even that requires a bit of thought uh, to see why these forms dxi are smooth. After all, even if you just take the open set u, you could parameterize it by some other function other than the identity. There are several ways to parameterize even just a single open set. So it's not really clear just from the discussion so far why these forms dxi are smooth, but this will drop out as an easy consequence of what is to come. So now we are going to increase the complexity level. We are going to try to understand how pullbacks look on this open set u. So what we can do is let omega be a k form on u. Okay. And of course, with respect uh, to the standard dx1 to dxn basis, we can write this as summation ai of x dxi. You can write omega as this, where i runs through i and k. Okay. Now we are going to assume that these ais are smooth functions. So essentially we are saying that with respect to this frame field dx1 to dxn on the open set u, the local coordinates here they are actually global coordinates because u as a global parameterization, the global coordinates aix are smooth functions. Let's analyze what happens to this k form when we take a map f from v to u where v subset of rn is also smooth is also a smooth map v subset of rn is open sorry v subset of rn is open is open and f is a smooth map In this scenario, let's try to see what is f star of omega. Now we are going to repeatedly use these properties of pullbacks that I assume you take for fact or you prove it right now. These are trivial to prove. So please prove it now before proceeding because uh, it's simply not possible to do it without the basic properties of pullbacks. Okay, so we will do it step by step. First, what is what is f star of dxi okay now uh, before we get utterly confused in the notation as these are actually somewhat involved notationally what i'm going to do is to make sure that you don't pull out your hair what we do is we denote we denote the basis forms basis forms on v by dy1 to dyn. These are exactly actually dx1 to dxn. They are exactly the same forms except these are defined on v instead of u. In fact, this dx1 to dxn, dy1 to dyn, they are all defined on the whole of Rn. Just for notational convenience, so as to not get confused, dy1 to dyn will be the basis forms defined on v, whereas dx1 to dxn will be the basis forms defined on u. Both forms behave the same way. At a given point, when acting on a vector v, it just returns the ith coordinate. Okay. Now what we do is we have to calculate. We know that f star dxi is going to be some form. It's going to be a one form. And the basis forms you have denoted by dy1 to dyn. So you can write it as summation ai of y dyi. i runs from 1 to n. Where ai from v to r are some functions. Are functions. 
okay now how are we going to find out uh, what these functions are wait a second uh, as it is i am confusing you with notation let's just change this to j throughout because there is already a i on the other side so so as to not get completely confused a little bit of confusion is good j equal to 1 aj dyj aj of y aj from v to r is a function okay so we know that uh, the right hand side f star of dxi is going to look like this how do we determine the coefficients well if you th think back about how these dyjs are the basis you will remember that to do that all you have to do is you look at um, f star f star of uh, this dxi acting on the vector acting on the vector ej this is going to give you the coefficient aj okay aj is going to be given by the action of f star dxi on ej if you don't remember why this is the case please re-watch some of the videos or go through the notes when we studied the basis for differential forms okay now what is this by definition this is nothing but dxi dxi of f f at the point a so of course of course i must um, evaluate at a point so let me just make it at a acting on ej is uh, aj or rather let's make it y acting at the point y here also it's y okay so this is going to be dxi or at the point f of y then this acts on the vector df of ej df at of course y of ej this is the very definition of pullback but what is dfi of ej ej is this the jth standard basis vector dfy is a linear map so dfy acting on ej is essentially going to give you the jth column of the matrix uh, when you write down what dfy is in matrix in matrix notation that is write down the jacobian matrix so this is going to be dxi f of y acting on the vector dj f1 of y e1 plus dot 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 dj fn of y en i have just written down what dfy acting on ej is going to be now this looks good this we know that dxi just picks out the ith coordinate for you so this is just dj of fi at the point y nice so we now know what the coefficients of the form f star dxi is going to be so f star dxi at the point a in the set v acting on the vector v acting on the vector v so better way to write this the way i've written this is a bit ambiguous f star of dxi at the point a acting on the vector v is nothing but d1 fi a v1 um, plus dot 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 dn fi at a vn so the pullback of these basis forms dxi turn out to be rather simple and the expression is rather nice okay now uh, one can see that the pullback the coefficients of the pullback are also going to be smooth functions when written out in the basis uh, dy1 to dyn so this shows that rather that when you write down the the coefficients in the special basis dy1 to dyn the special frame field you do get smooth functions which is a good sign 
okay now let's complicate the situation let's consider let us consider the forms the forms dxi on u where where i is an element of i and k that is i is some i1 to i k okay these are forms that form a basis for the space of k forms now uh, we have already seen that via this wedge product we can write these forms dxi at the point a at the point a uh, or rather we can just write dxi as just dxi1 wedge dxi2 wedge dot 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 dxik note remember uh, remember or recall that the wedge product of forms on manifolds was defined point wise that is you take the wedge product of the corresponding forms on each tangent space since the assignment is respects the position that is the form assigned at a particular point a is in the tangent space at that particular point you can make this well defined and from the fact that you have already proved something like this for forms defined on vector spaces this follows even for manifolds and in particular for open sets okay now here is the place where i need the behavior of pullbacks with respect to the wedge product f star of dxi at the point a is going to be just f star of dxi1 at the point a wedge f star of dxi2 at the point a wedge product dot 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 f star dx i k at the point a this just follows from the nice behavior of wedge products and pullbacks okay so what is f star of dx i1 at a well we just studied we just studied that um, when you take f star of dx i at the point a acting on v this just gives this right it just gives d1 f i a v1 plus dot 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 dn f i a v n okay so let's introduce the notation for this um this object on the right is called d d f i a v this object on the right okay so this is by definition just equal to this so d f i a is a form whose action at the particular vector v is just given by d1 f i a v1 plus dot 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 d n f i v n so when you take a function and differentiate this function you do get a form and the action of that form is exactly similar to the action of the derivative map the derivative map can be viewed as a map from the tangent space to the real numbers therefore the derivative map in some sense defines a one form on the open set in more generally the derivative of a function from a manifold m to r defines a differential one form from the tangent spaces to the real numbers right so this is all just a notational nonsense so you get you get d um, f1 at a wedge d f2 at a dot 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 d this is not f1 sorry these are d f i1 d f i1 d f i2 d f i2 at a dot 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 wedge d f i k at a okay so Uh, just try to understand what these forms d f i s are and then the rest will follow quite easily so we now know how to pull back even the basis forms d x i where i is now a multi index Ev putting everything together if you take an arbitrary form omega of x given by summation i in i n k 
omega and uh, not omega ai 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 of x dxi at the point x and if you pull back f f star omega if you pull this form back and take it at the point y this is just going to be summation i in i n k a i at the point f of y f star of d y i x this just uses that linearity of the pullbacks and this is going to be summation i in i n k a i of f of x d f i okay where d f y is just a shortcut d f i is just a shortcut for d f i 1 wedge d f i 2 wedge dot 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 d f i k okay now what is it that we have achieved we have shown that if omega is a smooth form smooth form on u then so is f star omega in fact in fact we have shown we have shown we have shown that that if summation a i d x i if this is omega and a i's are smooth a i's are smooth then then omega is smooth what i mean to say here is if under the standard basis vectors d x i if you choose those and express the coordinate functions a i in in that basis and if you get a i's are smooth then this form entire form omega itself is smooth note smoothness of a form means it should be uh, the x ex local expression in any parameterization should be smooth i want you to check that in fact if you have an expression for omega where a i's are smooth it's going to be smooth in any other parameterization of a piece of this open set okay now finally putting all this together is a grand exercise for you to solve using pullbacks let let m be a d dimensional manifold and let let omega omega be a k form on m let phi 1 from u 1 to m and phi 2 from u to m be two local parameterizations local parameterizations of m near a let e 1 1 to dot 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 e 1 d be the frame field frame field coming from coming from phi 1 and e 2 1 comma dot 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 e 2 b be the frame field be the frame field coming from coming from phi 2 then the local components local components of omega of omega are smooth 
smooth with respect to e11 comma dot 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 e1d if and only if they are with respect to e21 dot 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 e2d uh, and here what i mean by smooth i mean smooth smooth on the intersection of course you cannot talk about anything outside that intersection uh, so this should be u1 this should be u2 on the intersection if if uh, the local components are smooth with respect to one frame field then it is with respect to another okay so let's end this video this has already become quite long let's end this video by understanding how pullbacks under a diffeomorphism behaves so we have f from v to u a diffeomorphism so let's write this properly a diffeomorphism this means that this is a smooth map whose inverse is also a smooth map let's look at f star of dx1 wedge dot 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 dxn here i'm denoting dx1 or oh, let's let's stick to the same notation we had before f star of dy1 wedge dot 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 d uh, y n. let me just check uh, dx1s correspond to u or uh, yeah this is correct uh, the originally what i wrote was correct f star of dx1 wedge dot 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 dxn let's try to understand what this pullback is okay now before we uh, do this let's just first take uh, a better situation where we have t from rn to rn a simpler situation not a better situation where t is a linear map linear map let's just consider the form dx1 wedge dot 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 dxn this is now treated as an alternating n form defined on the vector space rn this is what i talked about before when i said there will be an ambiguity in notation when you see the term dxi you have to infer from context whether it's actually going to be a k form on rn treated as a manifold or a k form when uh, sorry a one form on rn treated as a manifold or a one form on rn treated as a vector space okay so let's take the case of a linear map let's try to do find out what t star of dx1 wedge dot 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 dxn is going to be okay now we know that this is just by definition and the properties of pullback this is just dx1 composed with 3 wedge dot 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 dxn composed with t this doesn't seem very helpful at all this is not very insightful we don't know what is happening how to evaluate this wedge product so we are going to have to take a much more clever approach note note that note that um, the dimension dimension of alt n r n is 1 we have already figured out what a basis is going to be it's going to consist of only one element in fact this dx1 wedge dot 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 dxn is a basis okay now we have already or you have already shown that t star is actually a linear mapping it's going to be a linear map from alt n r n to alt n r n but we just saw that alt n r n is a one dimensional vector space that means t star is just multiplication by some scalar okay t star is just multiplication by some scalar we also know that determinant from r n n to r uh, is an element is an element of alt n 
R n. This is where everything began. Determinant is the unique multilinear alternating n form on R n with the normalization determinant of E 1 to E n is 1. Okay. So, determinant is the is an element in this one dimensional vector space therefore determinant is itself going to be a basis right it's going to be a basis and from the discussion so far since determinant is an element the t star of determinant is going to be some constant times determinant okay because t star is just going to be multiplication by some fixed constant c in particular for this basis element it's going to be c the multiplication by c. How do we evaluate what the c is? Well, we act both sides on the coordinate vectors e1 to en. Okay? So, what we do is we act t star of determinant on the standard basis vectors e1 to en. This is going to be c determinant of e1 to en which is just c because determinant of e1 to en is c. But what is t star of determinant of e1 to en? Well, this is just pulling back by a linear map. This is just determinant of t e1 comma dot 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 t e n. This is c. But determinant of t e1 to t e n th that is just essentially taking the determinant of the matrix of the linear transformation under the standard basis which we know is just determinant of t. So, this constant is just determinant of t. So, this this is known as the determinant theorem this conclusion conclusion is known as the determinant theorem. So, pulling back by a linear map is just multiplication by a constant where that constant is determinant of t is known as the determinant theorem. Why is it called the determinant theorem? Well, if you think about what has happened, this equality which we know to be true, which e by definition can be taken as the definition of determinant, right? We, if you did not have the, de if you did not have a uh, determinant, if you we did not know what a determinant is, what you can say is, um, t star is multiplication by a scalar the determinant of the linear map t is just the scalar c you can define the determinant of a linear transformation using the theory of alternating n forms that we have developed okay anyway we are taking determinant for granted so we are not going to pursue this way of determining or defining the determinant okay now, back to the general case, when you have a linear, not just a linear map, when you have a map f star diffeomorphism, when you take f star dx1 wedge dxn at a, this is going to be determinant of df at the point a, dy1 a wedge dot 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 dyn a. Okay, where dy1 to dyn is the basis of one forms on V. One forms on V. Actually, if you think about it, we nowhere actually use that f is a diffeomorphism. Just the fact that f is a smooth map is enough for all this to go through. Okay. So this was a lot of abstract stuff. This was really a deep look into forms. Please rewatch this video if something is not clear. Look through the notes and please do solve all the exercises that I have left for you. Those are very important to understand these abstract notions. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the video on a deeper look into forms.